We're gonna talk about some parasite resistance in pigs, specifically our Idaho pasture pigs, as well as making sure that you get good breeding stock or good, just good feeder stock from a breeder who cares about that breed, maintaining, protecting, and developing the characteristics of that breed. Welcome back to the farm at Free Warden. I'm standing out here right now with our first litter of Idaho pasture pigs since we got them last year. We went to the source, White Bison Farm. You can look it up. It's in Leona, Wisconsin. If you want to get pigs from the original Idaho pasture pig stock, the, the original uh, bloodlines from the breed, that's where you gotta go. When the breeder of the Idaho pasture pigs decided it was time to retire or whatever the case was, White Bison Farm got all of the breeding stock and they maintain that to this day. They are also the curators of the Idaho pasture pig registry. They take care of all that stuff. I speak directly to them anytime I've got uh, questions or concerns or anything like that with uh, breeding, with getting pigs registered. So I've currently put this litter in on a litter notification in the pig registry for the Idaho pasture pigs. In this litter we've got two boars. One of them is sold and I'm actually delivering that to the buyer today. The other boar is not sold yet. We do have two gilts left that are not sold. The other two are spoken for. We're keeping those. These guys are just looking great though. I'm really proud of this first litter. Uh, we got a really good setup with Gunhold and with uh, Bjorn as the breeding pair. And this first set of pigs here is just doing awesome. So I couldn't be happier with the results of this. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Gunhold does in coming years. She's been an awesome mother so far. Another thing that uh, we're pretty proud of here at Free Warden is the fact that these pigs are what I'm gonna start referring to as parasite resistant. These guys, when you move them and when you keep them on uh, clean, fresh pasture, they might root it up a little bit like they tend to do in September and they're doing that a little bit here, but we'll probably reseed the spots that they've rooted up, like right here behind me. They've rooted this up a little bit. They haven't completely destroyed it, so some of it will grow back, but this is very common for them to do in September, kind of a month where they reset and they need higher quantities of um, minerals. But uh, yeah, these guys, they're, they're doing a little rooting right now but we're gonna to continue to move them around the pasture, setting up new paddocks. And what that's gonna do is it's not gonna give the parasites a chance to hatch and then to re-enter their digestive system and then produce even more parasites that will hatch and then re-enter their digestive system, so on and so forth. So we're keeping them on a paddock for about 10 days and then moving them on so they're always on fresh grass fresh pasture where they are right now doing a little rooting, but they mostly graze. <laughs> These are a true grazing pig. Uh, if you do keep them on the, the uh, right minerals, they won't do so much rooting or any at all. When they are deficient in minerals, that's when you're gonna see them start to root. And it's, it turns out that in September, they need higher quantities of minerals and they still root some. One of the reasons that we like a parasite resistant breed is first of all, we don't have to use wormers. We don't have to use ivermectin. We don't have to use any of those commercial chemical wormers on our pigs. We can supply natural dewormers for our pigs. 
And what those are is basically diatomaceous earth, rosemary, apple cider vinegar. There's a whole host of herbs and supplements that just are naturally occurring and are actually really good for the pigs in general. So it doesn't actually even make their meat toxic to you. So for example, a lot of times when you worm an animal, you're not supposed to even think about butchering and processing that animal until you know, at least a month, sometimes two or three months, so that that wormer can get through its system and that it's not going to harm you when you ingest the meat. Plus you've got another problem when you're worming an animal is that it's going to actually affect the health of that animal some. They're all playing now. This is just what piglets do. They, uh, they play, they, they're practicing asserting dominance. And uh, when you get a bunch of new pigs together, they'll all do this for about a half hour maybe. Maybe only five, 10 minutes. But still, they do this to establish that order of dominance, that hierarchy. And um, it's good for them. It's good and healthy for them to do this. It's uh, them learning social order and all that sort of stuff. And they get pushed around by mom too. Mama Peggy, she uh, she lets them know who's boss if they get out of hand. I've seen her throw one of these guys five feet in the air. Not up, but away from her. So there are actually several benefits to not having to worm your pigs. The first one is you don't have to buy the wormer. The second one is you don't have to worry about that meat being contaminated by the wormer, by those chemicals. The third one is the health and virility of the pigs. Their vitality is just gonna be even and, and only progress. It's gonna be much better for the animal if you don't have to worm them, but this does require a little bit of work and a little bit of forethought and preparation beforehand because you're gonna have to be moving them along in the pasture. And uh, if, you, uh, if you skip a week and you leave them out there a couple days or a week or, or a couple weeks longer, then you might start to see higher worm counts in their stools. Hey there, mama. You're a good mama, aren't you? One of the things that you got to remember about a parasite resistant animal is it doesn't mean that they can't get parasites. What it means is they're resistant to it. So it's, it's like water resistance versus waterproof. They're not parasite proof. They are parasite resistant. You still gotta take care of them. You might still want to provide them some natural deworming herbs and other, uh, other ingredients such as diatomaceous earth in their, in their feed and they'll ingest that and that creates an environment in their system that is uh, not, not good for the parasites and will kill them or flush them out. not all that expensive to get into the registry program. Your initial big upfront cost is getting some breeder quality pigs, some quality breeder pigs. And from there, it's pretty minimal fees to get a farm registry number. And it's pretty minimal fees to register these pigs. I mean, it costs 10 bucks. That's it, that's all it costs is 10 bucks to, to register a piglet. It's free to announce the litters, to notify the registry of the litters, and then to get your pre-registry numbers for each of the piglets so that when you're ready to register them, you just enter their numbers in. The point is really, what do you want out of your pigs? And if you're looking for breeders, you gotta make sure that these guys are from a registered farm and that they're on the breeder registry you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the Idaho Pasture Pig Registry is gonna be able to hold that breeder accountable if they sell you something that is not what they said it was. So what this does for you as somebody who's looking at possibly purchasing Idaho Pasture Pigs is it gives you peace of mind knowing that 
you are more secure in purchasing pigs from a registered farm than you would be from just purchasing them from anybody who's just claiming that they've got Idaho pasture pigs for sale. So our goal here is to produce the very best quality Idaho pasture pigs that we can. All this to say, I can't emphasize enough how great the registry is and the tools that they've, they've spent a lot of time and a lot of money on producing. I can't stress how much, how important it is to buy from a reputable breeder, a quality breeder who cares about their pigs, who cares about what they're doing, who cares about their customers, and who cares about their reputation. Uh, we've just begun, so our reputation is not established yet, but we're doing everything that we can to make sure that we do this right so that when, when it comes time, <laughs> if I've got a customer who goes, hey, we'd like some, uh, we'd like some references, I can go, yeah, no problem, here's three. Here's five right off the top of our heads. We're working towards that, and uh, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to working with people out there who want to get into this breed. This is an awesome breed of pig. They are so friendly. They're all wound up. Look at them go. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh yes, you want some belly rubs? Man, I remember when they were like a fraction of this size. They get big so fast. Yes, yeah, so fast. That's about all the time we got for today. Thanks for joining us from all of us here at the farm at Free Warden. Y'all take care. Go hug somebody. God bless. Everything's gonna be okay. Peace.